All right, welcome everybody, Matrix Live. Um, we've got some great demos for you. Oh, and the doc I'm looking at with the demos has just jumped all over the place. All right, here we go then. So Doug is going to talk to us about Alum and X and what we've been up to over the last month. Kerry uh, is going to talk about OIDC. Goodness knows what what time zone um, it or time it is in, in Kerry's time zone. And Quentin, this is a last minute demo. Um, really hot off the press. Uh, he's going to show off the UI polish and translations in the matrix authentication service. So, Doug, are you out there? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Cool, let me share a screen. Oh, no. And can you see a screen? I can. Okay, yeah, I can see everything now. It all disappeared. Um, so this is um, our version 1.4 of Element X iOS. Um, we released this this week, the test flight, and it should be available next week. So I think for people watching it, you should have had it for a week. Um, so I'm just going to run over some of the, the, the new features that we've added. Um, quite a few of these have been in development for a while now. And so we've, we've just enabled a lot of stuff all at once. Um, so the first thing is um, we can now finally mention people. Um, so if I say, uh, I get a little pop-up above the, the room and I can tap on that. Uh, and we, re we render um, a nice little pill like you would expect from the other apps. Um, if I tap on it, um, it pushes to the user again, how you would expect. And um, if I quickly try and send one back from the other client, uh, it comes back um, and we differentiate between the two with um, green or green or gray, depending on if it's coming to you or not. Um, so the, this feature, Maro has put an awful lot of time into this feature um, over the months and it looks quite simple, but a lot of work has gone into the fact that we're rendering Swift UI inside of UI kit inside of Swift UI, and I think that repeats twice more. Um, so yeah, this is really great to see this all finally sort of coming together and working really seamlessly. Um, so then next thing is voice messages. Um, voice messages are now available. They work the same as in um, the current app. So if I press and hold and say, hello, one, two, one, two, testing, I'm recording a voice message. The message should be recorded. If I play it back and say, hello, one, two, one, two, testing, I'm recording a voice message. And then if I hit send, it should get sent up just like that. And we can play it back and say, hello, one, two, one, two, test. And we can scrub around one, two, a voice message, say, hello, message. Um, so to replay the bits if you need to do that. Um, so this has been built by the features team. And again, they've been working really hard on this for the last month or so. And like, it's been great watching all of this come together and finally um, making it um, for this um, for this 1.4 release. Um, so next we have um, app lock. Um, so um, now if you come into settings, there is a new screen lock section and we can enter in a very secure pin. We will confirm the pin. And then we can choose whether we want to use um, face ID or touch ID to um, to bypass the pin and just make it a lot quicker. So I guess say yes to that. And now, if I send a top secret message into this room, if I background the app and I go to the app switcher, we hide the contents of the app so nobody can read it. And when I open it, it will do a face ID scan before it reveals all the content. Um, so, um, and then the other thing I guess to show is if I open it and try and fail a face ID like that, um, I can manually enter in my pin and just do it that way. So if you just chose to disable um, the face ID, you would see that instead. Um, and then the final feature that I would like to show um, is that we have built-in element call. So you can see in the top right-hand corner, there's a little camera button. Um, if there's a call already ongoing from another client, that should turn green and tell me that I can join a call. I think when I press join, my screen share will stop. So let's just see what happens. I think you're okay. Um, 
It's working, but you can't see what I can see now where I can actually see an ongoing call. Um, so I'm not sure exactly why I've just noticed this before we, before we, like whilst we were rehearsing the demo. Um, so yeah, but you can, like, it is that simple. You just hit the join button and you can be in a call, um, in the room. Um, and yeah, it's like a lot easier than using links and sharing those links around. Um, so that is all of the, the features that have been added in the 1.4 release of Element X on iOS. I think all of these features, possibly by our mentions, are in the Android release as well, and they're all coming to you very soon. Yay! Yeah. yeah, it's super stuff, everybody. Uh, that's a that's a huge body of work, um, and you you rattled through that really really quickly, Doug. It was a great demo, um, but just uh, not to sort of step over quite how much effort has gone into uh, what you've what you've just shown off there, especially the uh, um, uh, Element Core uh, support. All right, Kerry, are you out there? It's six a.m. in New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, this is why I was a bit surprised to see uh, to see her name. Have you pre-recorded somewhere, perhaps? Hmm. Have you gone there? Right. Well, in that case, um, maybe we can get you something pre-recorded, uh, and we'll stick it in um, the uh, Matrix Live for real. Um, Quentin, uh, I think you have the floor. This is this is a last minute, really hot off the press. Yeah, Tib was asking for public demos, and I was like, yeah, I should probably show what we've been doing on the on the off service recently. I was kind of hoping for Kerry to introduce a bit more on the OIDC project first. So if you're not familiar with it, we're replacing uh, part of the authentication stack. In Matrix, and this comes, um, this is implemented through a separate project, which is called the Matrix Application Service. And let me show you how it looks like now. So, can you all see my screen? Where? Yes. Yep. All right. So, um, I'm just gonna demo on my local Matrix Application Service um, instance, um, logging in first from um, from Element Web, uh, if I do this, this is the how the screen looks like. You can log in either from um, a regular username and password baked account, or we have support for upstream SSO accounts. So there was a lot of polish going on here uh, compared to uh, the last time I saw the screen. So if I'm gonna get a go ahead and create an account, uh, let's say uh, test. Let's add an email. Um, then the next screen after that will ask me to verify my email address. So we have a very nice new component for entering the two-factor of uh, code. Let me just grab the email I just got with the code here. Continue. Um, this is showing me um, that element want to actually access uh, wants to access my account. Actually, this is kind of what Carrie was about to to show in her demo is that now Element Web is an IDC native client. Uh, so you see here that we have the client name. We don't have uh, it's still missing a few metadata, but a few differences here is that uh, we can actually like, cancel the flow and. Uh, I'd have more information about the client and stuff like that. Anyway, so that works. Uh, so this is like the, the experience you might expect when you um, create an account that is baked by a password. Um, now, if I go ahead and do one, um, the other two things I wanted to show is the case where you are logging in with an upstream, uh, an upstream SSO provider, for example, like this is just index just like clicking here to log in. This is a kind of a social login scenario. So if you are um, on matrix.org logging in via Google, uh, uh, Twitter or something like that, um, the, um, when creating your account first, it will um, prompt you whether you want to import some uh, stuff from your account or not, and it will let you choose your username. Uh, so let me choose, yeah, let's do Alice and create the account on the fly. 
which is different from uh, a more enterprise scenario where uh, if you're using, for example, Keycloak for um, your enterprise SSO, if I do a login here, uh, the information the screen will, will be different because all of this has been uh, chosen by my deployment, uh, by my home server admin, and I can't change those. And this is very flexible compared to what we were doing in Synapse. So yeah, those are the three um, main screens I wanted to show, the main flows. And of course, because we're using Compound, uh, we have nice support for the dark mode, also support for high contrast themes. And last but not least, uh, we integrated, um, we implemented a translation support in the OAuth service. So uh, let me present to you the uh, Matrix of Service Baguette Edition, uh, translated in French. So yeah, a uh, bit unprepared demo, but this is a, an overview of what, what has been happening in terms of UI polish and new features in the OAuth service. Mm. Fucking awesome. Super stuff, Quentin. That's really cool. And everything's everything's compound backed, right? Yeah, it is. So uh, it's it's actually um, um, so nice to to work with all this, and it's very uh, nice. as a compound consumer, it's uh, you really see the benefits of doing this kind of libraries. Yeah, I mean, th this this was really the part of the value that we really hope to get out of the project, where just as we do more and more disparate web development across the company, it has that has that consistency throughout. So it's really, really great to uh, uh, really great to see. All right. Well, that brings us to a close for um, our Matrix Live demos.